so there has to be another one because you can tell with all the debris hanging I noticed that in North Carolina it's a good sign of black widows and there it is In part one of this series, I spent the first night in an awesome cabin. Then I hit the abandoned village of Batstow. After that, I headed to camp, set up, and cooked myself some dinner. Once the sun had set, I decided to grab my gear and head out into the vast forest of the Pine Barrens, blanketed in the brilliant light of a full moon. Those clouds are moving awfully fast. I am in the middle of nowhere. It's a... What the f was that? Okay, I'm not joking. I started filming to talk about how far away I was from the closest road, which is at least four miles. I'm hearing something I have never heard before. I'm not even joking. It's huge. It sounds like a freaking lion. I heard a lion chuffing once at the zoo. It's not quite that intense, but... I'm going. <laughs> I say I like these moments, but that is messed up. There is nothing anywhere. There is no humans anywhere. There is nothing I know of that sounds like that. Oh, I wish I could get that on film. Clearly, I decided to head back to my vehicle and put a little distance between myself and that sound. And that's when things got just a little bit more interesting. Okay, so I'm not in the same spot now, but I gotta tell you, that sound was so weird. It was like, imagine like the biggest dog, like woo woo woo, but the size of Cerebus or something, you know, like <laughs> And I'm just now drawing the conclusion but that it's a full moon I tell you if my my wife was still alive She would have connected that immediately and been like, you know, it's a full moon But um, you know It's just nature <laughs> I'm sure but it doesn't stop the hairs from standing up on the back of my neck. I'm not even joking. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not pulling your leg. That really happened. Whatever it was, it was creepy enough to encourage me to go elsewhere. And I was a bit of a walk from the car, too. Without my walking stick. Yeah. There it is again. Okay, so now I'm hearing it in front of my line of travel. It did it again. It's definitely not a coyote. I've heard them before. And it's way too deep for a coyote. But I was, you saw, I was driving at a, a decent speed for the Pine Barrens for three minutes. So I guess there's another one. Crazy thing is, this isn't far from where I camp at Lower Forge. I never heard anything like that there.
But, you know, there's a lot of sugar sand out here. So, you know, I get the vehicle stuck. Vehicle stuck. And I'm walking for hours. We're camping out. I do have another tent in here somewhere. Like, that'll make me feel secure. I'd rather be out in the open so I can respond instead of in a little lunch wrap package. This is a black widow, a male to be exact, which happened to be harmless. It's the females you gotta watch out for, and there are many of them within 15 or 20 feet of my tent. Well, it keeps me on my toes, I'm not that concerned. They stick to their webs, and they're not aggressive spiders at all. It's really cool, to be honest. So, get this. While I'm trying to film this male courting the female, um, the whole time I'm standing in another widow's web, completely unaware. What's really interesting is the fact that the female keeps coming out to investigate my, my foot. I find that to be strange widow behavior. Good thing I'm wearing shorts. I wouldn't want to find her in my pants later on when I'm changing for bed. Okay, so as you can tell, it's the next day. And of course, I'm next to the highway. This is one of those spots that I check every time I pass it. But last night, I was out for quite a while, just driving, seeing how far the one road or path or whatever went into the pines, and it went forever. Finally, I had to turn around. Uh, it took me like 40 minutes to drive back. Actually, it was probably longer than that. Um, you know, I go a little slow looking for things though. And there were some weird noises, let me tell you. I don't know if I'll put it in the video, but there was this one spot and I heard some weird noises. So much so that for the first time, I decided to leave that spot and go elsewhere. Did not, it was not human related. That wouldn't phase me. Um, so today, it's pretty warm. You can already tell it's like 90. I'm going to explore and see what there is to find and let's get exploring, huh? So those are going to be the fruits of the prickly pear. Uh, it'll take a couple of months, I think, for them to be ripe. Those there are baby prickly pears spreading, you know? So if they're pear-shaped like that, they're future cacti. And then when they're teardrop shaped like that, there'll be fruit. Okay, so this is an area I like to call tiger beetle ruins because tiger beetles and ruins. But uh, this is a log that I always check and I'm going to look under it. You could tell I have not slept. I got three hours last night, but when you're camping, why would you want to sleep it away when you can explore and find stuff? Usually I find this large beetle grub under here. It's a stag beetle grub. And it's not there. I wonder if it finally morphed. There's its sleeping cavity. They feed on, you know, rotting wood and stuff. But, uh, I guess it metamorphosized. So these caterpillars are feeding not only on the pine, but also these these oaks. So that's got to be convenient. Some more blue-eyed grass. As I said yesterday, one of my favorite flowers to find out here. What are these? It's kind of cool. They're only on this yucca.
Uh, he doesn't like being in the sun. For the last two or three years, I've been frequenting this spot in hopes to find one of the larger snake species. So far, the only species I've found here have been worm snakes, which are still pretty cool. My hope for finding an exciting species here is rekindled. That is a decent snake. Look at that. There's the head right there. Okay. There's the tail, right? You see the whole length, tail, oh the head, the wind just blew the head over there. But the head starts there, it goes all the way along. That thing is, the skin itself, I mean skin stretch, but that skin is at least seven feet long. I wonder if it's a pine snake or a, a racer, because I don't see much pattern on it. I should collect the head for later. I can look up the species with this. But the skin was fresh because it hasn't rained since early May. Um, and that skin was damp and still stretchy. So it's a very recent shed. Which means the snake is here somewhere and I can't find it. Well, well, this might be where the snake comes and goes. I'm a little skeptical, but there's mild signs of snake activity if you push it. The only piece of tin, it's the only piece of tin anywhere around here. And there's nothing. That sucks. This is Canada frostweed or frost plant. It's cool. There's more of it. Well, I guess I better leave this spot. I am absolutely soaked. It's not even noon yet. When they say there's a fire ban in the pines, they're not joking. A month ago, there was a lot of water here. Look at this. If I recall correctly, it hasn't rained here since early May. It is almost the end of May right now, just a few days away. So they've gotten 20% of what they should have gotten for the rain quota for May. It's a drought. Cool, this is uh, an orange winged grasshopper. I've always wanted to see one of these and I don't think I've ever seen one in the wild. I've seen them in my field guides. So this is pretty exciting for me. Basically a lifer. When it's in flight, those inner wings are just a, a vibrant orange. Well, that's pretty cool. This is the remains of an old tree, probably a pitch pine. That probably died Geez, one or two hundred years ago. And this is what's left of it. And somebody used it for a fire pit. Well, 
That's the last thing I expected to see out here. I tried replacing most of these. I'd say literally about 50% of these were rolled over and left. So whoever you are, I'm not even joking. So it's too hot. I'm too tired. Finding all those displaced rocks and logs made me very angry. I'm going to go find some place to swim and relax. I wonder what made those holes. Someday. So when I put my hands under water and stir up the surface water, you can see the, the heat differentials casting shadows on my hand until the upper layer gets carried downstream. The high acid content and all those tannins of the Pine Barrens waters gives them a superior taste to other sources of water and makes them last a lot longer before they start to turn or spoil. It was for that reason that seafaring captains would prefer Pine Barrens water over other sources of water for long voyages at sea. Oh, this water is warm. It was warm. Oh, a fish just came up, and I didn't film it because I'm a fool. So you hear me talking about how clean and pure the waters of the Pine Barrens are, but why do they have that reddish color? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. Obviously, when it rains, the water kind of soaks into the ground, but that ground is filled with pine needles and pine roots, cedar trees and roots and all that kind of stuff. So it basically percolates for ages. It takes on some of those tannins from the, the cedars and everything else, giving it that slight reddish color. But that also makes the waters highly acidic. That acid leaches iron from the sands. That iron oxidizes and becomes reddish. Over time, it um, releases this stuff up towards the surface, which is like this bluish iridescent sludge. That's another story. The iron deposits will mix with the, the banks and the sands and stuff and form an iron sandstone composite. That composite is known as bog iron or also pig iron, I think. That bog iron was actually used to make cannonballs and other various materials for our cause back during the Revolutionary War. Well, that's not going to last very long. Oh, how I wish there was not a fire ban. What a tease. 
So this is a Black Widow's web. You can see the debris hanging in it, and the silk is really strong. Really strong. Okay? There's usually insect carcasses within the web and all that. And then there's the retreat. The Black Widow makes right there. Okay? Great, I still gotta do that one. Nice. Yeah, set your food on the picnic table. That doesn't fit. So um, and I came back here, I laid in a hammock and all this kind of stuff. There's new neighbors here, I talked to them, they're pretty cool. But basically what I'm trying to say is for dinner tonight, I'm gonna cook one of the duck eggs from Lauren and Rob. Uh, Lauren gave me three duck eggs and then three other eggs and I'm super excited. You probably don't know this, but I've wanted to dry a duck egg since I was in my early teens. My mom told me that her mother used to eat them and that they're like meatier and gamier than chicken eggs. I love that kind of stuff. Oh, that's perfect. So, I gotta get this started. I don't wanna put too much flavor in here. I just wanna keep it from sticking to the pan. This is coconut oil and rendered duck fat that I made at home. Actually, no, I made that camping. This is uh, mostly pepper. I've got another one of these with all sorts of stuff in it. It's more than I meant. There's a fire ban in Jersey and I can't cook, obviously, over the fire. I gotta use this stove. So I'm gonna melt this rendered duck fat and coconut oil, and then I'm gonna break the duck egg into it from Lauren, and I'm really excited. That seems warm enough. I don't want to ruin my clothes. I forgot to get something to break this in. Those are the sesame seeds popping. Or the pepper kernels actually. It's like pop pepper. I might be on to something. Shoot. No! a lot stronger than a chicken egg. Look at that. That's overexposed. Okay, so here it goes. That is so cool. It's very similar. Just a lot more eggy. Not a lot more, but more. It's nice, smooth. 
Uh, I can't wait to see what the yolk's like. Here's the yolk. The yolk is always my favorite. Hot. Real hot. That's awesome. It's actually really smooth. I do find this superior to the chicken eggs. If I had these back home, this is what I'd get. It seems like more protein, but it's not gamier, in my opinion, unless this is too hot for me to taste. It's real smooth, real nice. I like this a lot. Lauren, you rock. Thank you so much. Wow. There's a thunderstorm coming through. A couple more in the distance. But you can hear it rumbling the whole time. Almost like a, an old fort is being invaded. And you hear the cannon fire and stuff in the distance. Oh, I gotta move fast. Check it out. The storm must have brought these down. This is mountain laurel. Look how they're designed to just, I guess, pop off like that. That's what it normally looks like. Holy cow, it looks like I have a black eye. That's why I can't film myself most of the time. So it rained last night. 
finally, uh, earlier I was saying that it hadn't rained since like May 6th or something like that. Um, well, it rained a lot. And it was lightning everywhere coming in, going in this direction, going in that direction. You know, the front was, was a big one. It was awesome. I tried to film it, but I don't understand the rolling shutter with this camera. Um, I'll have to work on that. But I went out, I drove around, went to a few spots. I went to the Silent Plains, and then I took, uh, I also went down Quaker Bridge Road, a bit of a ways, and I found a uh, carpenter frog, and I couldn't, it wasn't worth filming. It was a bad angle, and it wasn't quite close enough. Um, Fowler's Toad, American Toad, the carpenter frog, American Bullfrog, Green Frog, Oh yeah, and uh, Mid-Atlantic Leopard Frog. That was my prize for the night. So that was pretty cool, you know, five? Is that five? Oh yeah, and the carpenter, so six frogs species. Uh, toads are frogs, but frogs aren't toads. For stuff. Um, check out the trench I did. So it worked. It worked well. Uh, it's still pretty wet on this side. I've got an hour and a half to get out of here. But here's proof that it worked. give you an idea of how hard the rain came down last night, for starters, you can see the, re the circumference of where there was a great puddle, the great puddle of 21, and um, the circumference is surrounded by the pollen. And then, um, check this out, the, I had my little lantern on the ground which left an awesome shadow at night. That thing stayed lit, I just turned it off, and I had it uh, turned up pretty good to attract insects until I could see the fox and coyote. But um, the rain came down so hard that it splashes debris and dirt up with it, right? <laughs> Look at the lantern. Unfortunately, I have to wait until my tarp dries before I pack it up because experience has shown me that unless I dry it and pack things up now, I'm not going to get around to it until my next trip. No matter how many times I see a fence lizard, I gotta stop and film it. Now I'm going along and I heard a bit of a noise and look over just in time to see this guy going up the tree, one of these um, water oaks. So the snake's not super thrilled with me right now, but this is a, a black rat snake. It's a beautiful snake, isn't it? Look at this. See that S position? It means it's willing to strike me. It's nervous. It's sticking its tongue out a lot bite me right in the face. 
I'm sure you could tell it's not an aggressive species. These snakes can actually get pretty big. They can reach, um, you know, seven, seven feet sometimes, 50 to 70 inches tops. This is a good average size for this species though. This is the first large snake I've found in several years, to be honest. It wants to climb up my head. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to let this snake go, but every time I try to let it go, you know, put it in a tree, it just kind of holds on to me. Isn't that awesome? Wild black rat snake. So, holy cow. So look what else I just found. I'm holding this snake, I'm holding this rat snake, and at my feet, How am I gonna do this? I gotta let the snake go so I can uh, show you the turtle and talk about the turtle. Okay, so it finally rains last night and uh, puts an end to uh, a long, harsh drought. I mean, there were two forest fires a week ago in this area. And uh, I finally find a bunch of amphibians last night uh, a great size snake um, that's two snakes around here in two weeks finally after all these years and while I'm holding the snake getting shots and stuff at my feet the whole time is this eastern box turtle box turtles are really neat because well their name kind of gives it away they're able to pull their bodies into their shells completely and close these doors on the front and back of their their shell most turtles can't do that you know and snapping turtles and musk turtles and stuff their bottom shell the plastron is tiny so you know that's why they either smell really bad or snap you know bite your fingers off because they can't pull into their shells most turtles can pull into the shells mostly but the box turtle can actually pull all the way in and then It's got these two hinges here and here, and it can close it up, which it's doing right now. Look at that. So it pulls itself in and then closes this door here and closes this back door. So you can't really get in there to get to the food within. It's a perfect little parcel, isn't it? Box turtle. The males will have red eyes, the females have brown eyes, so this is a female. Another way, another way of knowing, hold on. But I'm gonna set this turtle back down and see if there's anything else to find. I'm gonna make some coffee though, back at the car. Have a look at this little turtle. It's too bad I ate my salad. He would have liked some of that lettuce. I'm not really good at turtles, but I'm excited to find them. Okay, so after looking at it, it's, uh, it's a painted turtle. The sun is really harsh. But remember how I was talking earlier about the box turtles? How in their plastron they have those hinges and the little doors that they can shut. Well, this turtle isn't a box turtle. So it can pull its legs into its shell, right? And its head. Its tail will curl up around here. But um, it can't close its shell. So if you're very determined, you can get to the tasty meat inside. I'm not gonna do that to you, little guy. Now turtles have awesome claws that they use for digging and sometimes tearing their food apart and stuff. And some species will actually, for courting, they will go on up to their mate 
and they'll put their front feet in front of them and then wiggle the toes, kind of like waving at each other face to face. It's a little dance that they do. Look at those claws. Okay, so I just found a, a bunch of sweet fern and I want to harvest some to make a tea. Now as a hot tea, it's a bit of a, has slight astringent and tonic flavors and properties. But as a sun tea, it is amazing. It tastes like a nice English tea, almost like a sweet tea without the sugar. The stuff is amazing. Gonna get me some. So I'm gonna take some of these and I'm gonna make, uh, make my tea. I, I really love the smell of sweet fern. It smells sweet and spicy. Um, it just smells incredible. Really clean in a way. It makes me think of thyme, the herb, but it's nothing like it. it just makes me think of it. Love this stuff, very sticky. Leaves a yellow residue. That should be more than enough. Okay, that tea's gonna take a while. I'm not sure I'll be able to finish it before the end of this video. Wow, so this turned out to be quite the day, quite the end to a beautiful camping trip. I had a really nice time, found some cool stuff, I relaxed, got that thunderstorm, and uh, you know, not having a fire was not as bad as I thought because it gave me time to do other stuff. Um, had a great time at the tan tiny cabin and exploring and driving and just everything. Uh, the reptiles today were the highlight, really excited me. Well, actually, tiny cabin was the highlight. But as far as uh, getting out in the wilds, those reptiles and that snake was pretty exciting. Um, so <laughs> thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out uh, Pine Barren's post on Instagram. Follow them. Um, that's where you'll see the tiny cabin and all that good stuff. And I'm on Instagram too, under Chris Ignato. Who would have thunk? Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.